So we've talked a lot about this space junk coming back down to Earth, and that's the solution of it. But I think people have misconceptions or, or the wrong picture about what's actually going on. That's right. But I think have this atavistic fear of the sky falling on our heads. Uh, but in fact, space junk, when it comes in, is going pretty fast. Yep. The orbital speeds, you remember, is many kilometers a second. And so this is what something looks like as it comes in. I mean, the Earth is also really big, right? So yeah. the likelihood of any one place being hit by it is infinitesimally small. That's right. And most of the ocean is uh, most of the Earth is ocean or desert or something exactly. like that. But here we've got uh, a spacecraft coming in. And now, of course, this is how human spacecraft actually do safely yes. land. They've got yep. heat shields, but something without a heat shield is not going to survive re-entry generally. That's right. And, and, but again, but that's also partially by design. They want it to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere so the bits aren't left as junk on Earth uh, or in space. Though usually anything that's designed to work in space is not going to be very strong to withstand re-entry. Exactly. You have to deliberately design it to be good at re-entry. So yeah, it's quite pretty actually. And, and you, I mean, you can clearly see it fragmenting, right? You can see these fragments uh, and they're burning off. And, and again, they're burning off. These aren't necessarily on fire. They're heating up due to friction. And that's what we're seeing this glow of. That's right. So, so sometimes this is um, sometimes it does land on Earth. I mean, the small bits generally will burn up, yep. but a big bit was going to land. Now, I think you took this picture, right? <laughs> I, I did. And this was the uh, uh, debris from the SpaceX capsule. So the Crew Dragon, there's two parts. There is the capsule where the humans go in that have heat shields that are designed to re-enter and safely the rest of it, the unpressurized trunk, is actually jettisoned right before. Now, again, you're talking about the materials. The materials generally on the capsule are designed to withstand this. It, this is actually mostly titanium. Uh, it, this is three meters tall. It's one of the fins, and you know it's taller than me, and this was speared into the ground. This wasn't being propped up because of how heavy it is. Now, just imagine finding that in your paddock one morning. It, look, and it, it was a surprise to Mick when he woke up and it looked like an alien object. He wasn't quite sure. So these things do happen. Most of them, though, are much smaller. So even when they do hit the Earth, they actually don't land. You know, you can actually completely miss them. I think people think of this fiery crater. Most of the energy has actually been lost when it hits the Earth's atmosphere. That's right. Now, if you're deliberately sending yeah. a spacecraft to Earth, it's, if it's still under control, you can steer it down. And those are usually drops in what's called the spacecraft graveyard. This is basically a large area in the South Pacific Ocean where not many people live and not many ships are found. In fact, that previous video was taken from the ESA cargo ship re-entering over the South Pacific. Yeah, so you can deliberately send it down, but most of the spacecraft that fall down are not under control. That's right. So they could go anywhere. And we've seen them go anywhere. Um, and we've seen some survive and land in populated areas, and we've seen some come down and decades later only been uncovered. Now, one complication is that the atmosphere is bringing these things down, but the atmosphere varies in thickness. Right. When you get one of these big solar storms, the coronal mass ejections that we're talking about, as well as producing all the radiation, this also can puff up the outer layers of the Earth's atmosphere, make the atmosphere thicker in its tenuous outer regions, which means that spacecraft at maybe that near three or 400 kilometers up that normally would have a fair bit of time before they came down, maybe don't have so much time anymore. That's right, and we actually saw a problem with this, I think, last year when SpaceX launched a new batch of their Starlink satellites, well, they had launched previously a couple of days. They were getting into those higher orbits. Now the atmosphere puffed out because one of those storms. So what they were expecting at 300 kilometers was not what they got. And those satellites rapidly came back down to Earth.